Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Pauline Baird. I'm a cultural bearer. I bear the culture of my village, my village Buxton, where I was born and raised in Guyana, South America. I tell the stories of our people, of our women in particular, our family stories, our hidden histories, our practiced and even long forgotten traditions. What do stories say? Today, I want to tell you a story in my own life. You see this? This thing? You know what this is? Yes, this is a piece of cassava bread. Cassava bread is usually a round piece of food, maybe the size of this plate. You see this piece of cassava bread was given to me by my father about eight years ago. It was my last visit with him, the last time I saw him alive. I had visited and he said to me before I left, Ma, you're going to take some cassava bread? I said, no man, I, I don't really don't want cassava bread. You know, a few minutes later he said, Ma, you're not going to take some cassava bread? I said, okay, you got the cassava bread? He said, yes. And that's when he brought out this parcel with five cassava bread inside. Round, like I say. So... I thought, why am I taking cassava bread back to America? But if you know anything about village people, they love to give you all the kinds of things you used to eat at home to take back with you. So I took the cassava bread. Mm. Well, when I was on the plane, a hunger took me. So I took out my cassava bread. You think rat eat this cassava bread? It's not rat, it's me. I sat in the plane and I ate two cassava bread. And when I was on the third cassava bread, it dawned on me, oops, if I don't take back cassava bread for my sister, it's going to be war. So I stopped eating the third cassava bread, and I gave her two. This cassava bread, this piece of cassava bread, has traveled with me everywhere I've been in the last eight years. It's always in my suitcase. So I travel with my father. So... When I was thinking about what to talk about today, I thought of this cassava bread and I thought I'd share with you a piece I'd written and published in the Box and Friendship Express magazine um, under the column, What the Stories Say. My piece is called Morning Meditations, A Village. So let's begin. Give us this day our daily bread. Bake a shop bread, shop bread, pan bread, and the long bread. You know, the one we fight our brothers and sisters for to get the bobby. Give us this day our daily bread. Homemade bread. I'm talking about the ones we admire at the Friendship Methodist Church Harvest that look too good to eat. You know, the one that <laughs> Miss Effie made. Sniff, sniff. And wait, I used to wait and see if my grandmother would buy it. And I would say, Grandmother, can you buy the bread? She said, no. They said, it's for the parson. The parson. Why the parson got to eat all them nice things? Dear God, give us this day our daily bread. Not pone again. Cassava and pumpkin pone with coconut and cinnamon. Spice. We call nutmeg and thing. The one Miss Sheila baked in the box oven at the bottom house. Or at the one that we buy at Tracton Baker Shop. But we still like eating it though. You know? Not the hated thick middle, but the caramelized, chewy, crispy corners. Why does Pawn have to have only four corners, God? I want the corner, I want the corner. Who can get the corner in a household of six? But Everybody want the corner. Dear Jesus, please give us this day our daily bread, not cassava bread again. Here now, who call this thing bread? It don't even look like bread. It's a piece, it looks like a piece of undulating zinc sheet that has been dried on, parched and bleached by our sun. A real anemic looking piece of cracker biscuit and tasting like new cardboard until you chew it. 
and you chew it and you think mm-hmm I can take this as food uh -uh. and right in your kitchen and you're eating it you remember I remember Miss Toby Miss Mary Stoby she taught me in third standard that starches turn to sugars in the mouth when enzymes from the spit get to it mm hmm just so that is how I studied science in the village give us this day our daily bread is cassava still I can take this cassava bread that is indigenous people of Guyana give me it's still food I try it and I would agree that cassava bread tastes better when you dunk it in a little tea I mean evaporated tin milk tea or cocoa tea or chocolate tea with all the oil settling on the rim of your mouth on Sunday mornings or just the sugar water or teasam, sweet sage, combo pump, iron weed or lemongrass. How you like your, your cassava bread, hard or soft? How you just do it when you want it soft? Here, you just take it and you just dunk it in the liquid and you watch the liquid rise and you think of your second form science lesson where you learn that liquid can move from particle to particle as you watch your cassava bread get wet from soft to floppy and before you can give it a good <laughs> slurp in your mouth just like that all that science Gladstone market start you in second form that didn't make sense all start to make sense sudden so you put two and two together and bam you bright bright overnight mm -hmm. back in the day in the 70s or so in home ec, you learn to make porridge and ting from Miss Garnet and Miss Liverpool. They didn't have to teach you how to put a whole cassava bread in your hot milk and you don't get porridge. Not at all. Children knew by experimentation that cassava bread in milk does make porridge. But what they didn't know that by all accounts, eating that cassava bread in that milk saved their parents lots of money feeding them foreign cereals and hard to get farine give us this day our daily bread buddha rama sita bread like roti and dalpuri mix it up mix up the flour before board wife wake cut it ghee it up oil it up let it rise roll it till it flat like cloth and bake it on the tower clap it till it bursts like leaves you know your neighbor know you're cooking roti she hear the clap so you send two hot ones over in a brown paper with a child who comes back with stew pumpkin stew callaloo stew fish stew whatever stew you make your own stew too and you wipe up the roti in the stew and the puri in the stew with your fingers and you eat it so you knock it back with little hot tea to break the wind farmer man in the back dam. Gia with this day our daily bread now. Kanki. The banana leaf wrapped present hiding a cake made of stick in your teeth cornmeal. Sweet goodness, raisins and spice. Plucked from the pot of hot water, 30 minutes boiling, and you get your tea ready. Before you remove that string of the boiled package, bite the watery, not so sweet edges and move to the thick center eat slow eat slow that burst of flavor and corn can send you coughing in this covid time you don't want to cough drink your tea girl and if you don't got tea you drink a cool glass of mabi from miss borta shop at the back damn side mm -hmm, that will do dear god please tell me mother i want bake bake pot bake float pram you see the float and dig out the middle stuff it with saltfish too add dora pepper cheese if you like tip top cheese you put it in there and you walk it down and you go down the tea and you're ready you're ready for your belly swell you're ready go on Go through the door and go to school. Walk good. Thank you.